product designer in the Platform UX design team. Um, I'm a nerdy looking South Asian person uh, with black hair and glasses, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm wearing a green sweater, uh, and my background, uh, there is a bookshelf and uh, framed pieces of art on the wall. And today I'd like to share with you what we learned from enforcing 2FA or two-factor authentication for millions of GitHub users. So earlier this year, uh, GitHub started to roll out an audacious plan to require all users to enable two-factor authentication for their accounts, mandatorily. Um, we have heard this advice for years, enable 2FA for your online accounts uh, wherever it is offered. Uh, but here is one of the leading tech companies and largest uh, developer platform in the world enforcing it across the board. Uh, the Wired Magazine called our plans hardcore. Now that may make it sound a little bombastic, uh, but I'm here to share uh, that how our efforts to realize this are actually driven by a deep sense of empathy for our users. Uh, now, so as uh, software supply chain attacks become more and more common, uh, there's a sense of urgency here. And as individual developers are at the heart of the supply chain, keeping them safe is paramount to securing the whole software ecosystem. And that is a mission that we have taken on. How do we keep developers safe? And it starts with securing their user accounts. Uh, for some context, uh, here is a statistics from FIDO Alliance. Uh, Alliance. Um, around 80% of security breaches today stem from social engineering and account takeover or similar. Basically, they can be traced back in some way or the other to passwords as the root cause of the problem. Uh, some additional interesting numbers for you. 90% of the users have more than 90 online accounts and they use uh, up to 51% of their passwords. Um, reuse, I mean. Um, so in short, uh, we cannot rely on passwords alone to keep our users and our platform safe. And we're in luck because we have at our disposal uh, one of the most reliable and widely available solutions to the problem, two-factor authentication or 2FA. In simple terms, 2FA means that in order to confirm a user's identity, we ask for one more verification method in addition to their password. Uh, there's a bunch of options available here, uh, like one-time codes sent uh, via SMS or authenticator apps, security keys, and et cetera. Uh, it goes without saying that some of these are stronger than the others. So knowing what we need to do in order to fulfill our mission, uh, in early 2022, we set out on project good work. And our goal being, we will require all users who contribute to code on GitHub to enable one or more forms of two-factor factor authentication by the end of 2023. But of course, when we are talking uh, security at scale, there are generally uh, things are not that straightforward. So before we start to require them to enable 2FA, we looked at how many users currently have enabled 2FA. And these would be individuals who have either done this uh, voluntarily or have been mandated to do so by one or the other organizations that they're part of. And that number was around roughly around 20% of GitHub users which is fairly high as per industry standards, uh, but that also means that we have to bring along millions of users uh, in this journey. Also, uh, by introducing new security measures, there are additional complexities to solve for. 2FA still remains hard to use and very easy to lose. Uh, users lose their credentials all the time. And by enforcing this, we are adding cost and friction that can appear to slow them down. Besides, security that is not usable is not really that secure. Uh, then there is a uh, serious thought required to address issues of uh, accessibility and equity for a global user base. Uh, there are a lot of folks out there who cannot enable 2FA. They don't have a cell phone or their own personal computer for a variety of reasons. So by mandating that everyone enable 2FA without exception can raise the barrier to entry to a large portion of our user base unintentionally. Also, uh, we sh uh, how should we proceed with all the competing priorities from various different stakeholders, right? Like business, uh, product, customer facing roles like support and customer success. Um, so we have to find a right balance in maximizing the upsides uh, while minimizing the downsides. So it was clear that uh, it is not gonna be as simple as just flipping the switch and requiring everyone to enable 2 effort for their accounts. Uh, so it's almost uh, end of 2023. And I, as I mentioned in the last year or so, we have worked towards realizing this mission. We have learned a lot. Uh, I would like to share five of those learnings with you. Uh, some of these are strategic in nature concerning the higher level goals and outcomes, while others remain uh, are tactical, uh, focus more on the ground level product and design decisions. 
All right, learning number one. One of the key learnings uh, that was, uh, you know, around collaboration and how it can act as a catalyst. Uh, as anyone who has played or followed a team sport uh, will tell you that like how deep your bench is matters. So uh, in the context of product development, who is part of that team and who gets to contribute can not only uh, provide meaningful insights, but also directly impact what goals to pursue and strategy to employ. Um, our efforts greatly benefited from assembling a wide range of stakeholders, including uh, but not limited to engineering, product design, support, customer success, marketing, legal, et cetera. Uh, specifically, support function being involved from the very beginning was instrumental in understanding the problems users face uh, with respect to, to FA, account lockouts, and recovery. Um, we uh, have had like an exceptionally large number of 2FA related tickets that support was already dealing with. Uh, in fact, majority of the tickets that support uh, team deal today uh, are related with 2FA. Um, support teams are really close to customers and have a very deep understanding of customer pain points, as well as how to resolve them. So uh, leaning on them to understand the problem helped us chart our path forward. A uh, couple of our most important success metrics, as well as KPIs, actually are support related. Uh, okay, next learning. Um, now, it, this is probably the most overused proverbs in English language, like slow and steady wins the race, uh, but it captures the next learning perfectly, which is play the long game and cover all your bases. Uh, moving fast and breaking things can do well for a lot of different scenarios uh, when you're introducing something new, uh, something groundbreaking. Uh, but in this particular case, we needed to be slow, deliberate as well as measured. Uh, being pragmatic was more important for us than being optimistic and hope that everything is going to work out. Uh, so rather than rushing in, uh, even before enforcing 2FA for a single user, we invested heavily in improving the overall user experience, starting from the point where users sign into GitHub by uh, you know, entering their password, that being the first of the two factors. Um, we looked at normalizing all different 2FA methods and standardizing the behavior around it, uh, including the existing ones. Um, where users need to provide a one-time passcode uh, from an authenticator app or getting them on their phone via SMS. Um, giving more options uh, to authenticate to the users, we added GitHub mobile uh, app as the 2FA method. So users can provide, uh, you know, they can approve a web sign-in request from GitHub app installed on their phone. Uh, we also added support for the most secure and cutting edge methods leveraging web authentication. Um, physical security keys like YubiKey, uh, that many of us use. And uh, more recently, they've also invested in, uh, you know, bringing pass keys and using uh, biometric authentication like face ID and touch ID. Uh, and learning from uh, the data analysis, we also resolved and redesigned some of the self-serve recovery flows. Uh, so if uh, users misplace or lose their access to 2FA methods, they can get back into their account without having to reach out to support every single time. Um, and here, you know, a little bit of help that we tried to provide. So you can see that, like, you know, we were suggesting giving them hints of how they can be successful if they're thinking of, you know, if they're run out of options, we kind of like, you know, nudge them towards something that, uh, you know, that can actually help them rather than kind of resetting and, you know, going all the way there. Um, we also redesigned the entire 2FA configuration flow as well as authentication settings. Like we introduced the concept of preferred methods, uh, made the whole management experience customizable, try to make it a little bit more simpler. Um, and our approach to the overall rollout uh, was to, uh, you know, to do it in batches uh, of half a million uh, users at a time. So, uh, so that we can learn from each single batch and make necessary changes as we go along. Uh, we also planned out the 2FA enrollment for each individual user. So uh, first users receive a number of emails spread out over 45 days. Uh, in leading up to you know the uh, enforcement deadline, and then they get to see some banners uh, in the product uh, when they visit the site, telling them of you know what changes are coming, what requirements are there. They have an option right at the end of those forty-five days, uh, one time to kind of you know um, have a seven-day opt-out if they must. Uh, maybe they are on vacation, they need some uh, something ultra critical to help uh, the ease the enforcement pain. Um, but after seven days, you have to enable 2FA in order to you know, access the whole set of features that GitHub offers. Um, and that brings me to the next learning, uh, which is communicate early and often. Now, having a clear and consistent approach to communication is key to creating a good user experience. 
And we have to make sure that users understand what change is coming, when is it coming, and what is expected out of them. Uh, so engaging with marketing, PR, and inter internal communications team, we crafted and socialized multiple blog posts detailing out the upcoming changes. As I mentioned, there was an email campaign to prepare the selected users ahead of the time and encourage them to enable to FA voluntarily if they can, uh, along with that in product notifications. So uh, the idea being that when it comes to a disruptive change like this, uh, right, requiring users to enable a security feature so heavy handedly, uh, it was essential that we are forthcoming and transparent about what our reasonings are. All right, um, talking about learning number four, and uh, that is being opinionated and coaching the users. When we started to work on this project, Project Bulwark, we had no examples in front of us as such, you know, of like an undertaking of, at this scale. Uh, so we were cognizant of the risks. Uh, we can alienate our users, make their life miserable. We can also end up hurting our business as well as our brand. Uh, but we understood what the best security practices are. And even though there is this additional effort on users' part, we can guide our users with empathy and understanding and a little bit of tough love uh, in form of enforcement. Um, and uh, we have users who voice their concerns at times and you know, at displeasure at times too, uh, at such uh, security requirements. And we acknowledge that. And, there, and we try to do better uh, to further impro improve our designs and implementation as we go along. Um, we put this in practice in the 2FA setup flow. So uh, it is well understood that you know, getting one-time authentication codes by SMS is not the strongest of 2FA methods, even if it is the most widely used. Attackers have methods of compromising targets, phone numbers, and intercepting their text messages. Um, so, and you know, any 2FA method is better than none, but there are stronger options available. So to discourage users from uh, setting up to, uh, SMS as their 2FA method, uh, we show our recommended method instead. Uh, that is currently uh, the using the Authenticator app. SMS, which is the most widely available in use, is still available, but we have added just a little bit of friction to get to it. And this little, this one little change has actually resulted in 23% reduction in SMS being uh, used as a 2FA method amongst the newly configured account. You know, so that's a that's a win for best for security practices. Uh, we also uh, made downloading and saving backup 2FA recovery codes part of the setup flow itself. Uh, recovery codes can help you get back into your uh, account safely if you do not have, let's say, access to your phone, you lost it, you cannot you know, get to your, your primary 2FA method. Uh, so saving them properly can actually help you um, greatly reduce down the chances of getting locked out. So again, by doing this one little change, uh, by you know, making this change, 38% uh, increase in overall recovery code interact interactions. And uh, since uh, we have their attention and focus already, uh, we recommended users that they enable two and additional you know, two FA methods. Having more, more than uh, you know, two, two FA methods actually reduces users' chances of getting logged out of their account tremendously. Uh, and pleasantly, users have embraced this best practice uh, when we are prompting them to do so. so Users who are going through this flow uh, are twice as more likely to have enabled you know, two or more um, uh, authentication methods for their account. Okay, now lastly, um, it is fairly obvious, uh, but worth repeating that developers are people first. All people have motivations and biases that drive their behavior and choices. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, people still avoid doing certain things uh, even when they know it is you know, actually good for them. They procrastinate, they punt things. And in all such cases, sometimes external, uh, external motivators are not really helpful. Um, so we realized that we have to meet our users where they are, which meant designing how users can be successful, but also providing support when they actually fail. Um, here's a good example for that. So, as evident from large number of uh, 2FA related support requests, a sizable number of users who enable 2FA end up misplacing their credentials or forget where they have saved their recovery codes and end up getting logged out of their account, uh, at which time they reach out to support. We get it, it happens. You know, uh, we've all been there. There is no reason to penalize people for making honest mistakes. Uh, to account for this, we allow the users to safely reconfigure 2FA if they are uh, if they're unable to verify uh, their 2FA credentials, the first time, that is, the first time they are signing into GitHub after enabling 2FA. Um, 
in the case where a user hasn't uh, done a fresh sign in after 28 days of enabling 2FA, we do a scheduled verification uh, and similarly allow them to reconfigure it. So far, 25% of users who enable 2FA end up actually you know, reconfiguring it. Um, and second time around, it actually sticks. So that's a good thing. All right, uh, so we have put in a lot of work to strategize and then tactically execute on our plans. And overall, our investments and efforts are paying off. Um, I can report with confidence that the impact on this particular initiative within GitHub and on our customers has been net net positive. Uh, we have seen a, a significant reduction in the number of 2FA support tickets, a reduction of over 40% for 100K users. We had hoped to keep the trend flat uh, in the best case scenario and had planned our organizational capacity accordingly. But this outcome is very encouraging as we have gradually expanded the number of users being required to enable 2FA by the millions. This is, this is something nice to see. Uh, and this reflects greatly on you know, trusting the process to realizing your objectives. Um, another promising metrics, um, account lockout, lock, lockouts are down too. Uh, we are seeing an overall reduction in the uh, you know, account recovery attempts by users who have enabled 2FA by 33% uh, for 100K users, which means it, less number of users are getting logged out even as more of them are enabling 2FA. And apart from this, all of this has been very well received in the industry um, and amongst uh, experts in the security community. In fact, we have created now, now we have created a blueprint of sorts for our peers in the industry who can refer to this case study as a systemic approach uh, to improving platform security and adopting two-factor authentication at scale. So what's next? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are making pass keys available to all GitHub users that should get us closer and we are moving closer to a passwordless future where no longer you know, passwords and uh, will be required to sign into GitHub, you know, uh, one fine day probably. Uh, we still have millions of users uh, still remaining to bring out the, the 2FA security blanket. So we are working on closing that. Uh, we are also investing uh, in improving the overall account security experience, uh, periodic checkups, as well as targeted recommendations uh, so that users can, you know, trend in their security posture. Uh, all in all, this has been quite an enriching learning experience, and it feels great to be part of such a dynamic team. Shout out to all my coworkers that have contributed to this effort in one way or the other. Um, and I'm looking forward to pushing this uh, and the boundaries even further. And with that, I thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy it.